We say Obama, we say Republican, we say, um, and I'm typically not a person to point a finger. You know, maybe we should do something about it and not ask what his problem is. I can't imagine um, someone saying, well, this is one person's fault. It's not. In recent years, we've experienced a major recession that crippled the nation's economy, possibly permanently. Vast political changes ranging from the executive office down to the governorships that have brought a new kind of change that either side doesn't approve of. Is there still hope for what people call the greatest nation on earth? I don't know that the presidential election had anything to do necessarily with the recession, but if it had anything to do with the recession, I think we lost a lot of our blue collar customers. Um, from the recession, and I don't know if that was anything to do with, with uh, Obama being elected president or not. Um, the tattoo industry, it seems, which is, uh, seems to be able to, um, to continue on without those customers, we've adapted, but um, kind of hoping they get back to work so they get back in here. Presidential changes uh, always affect the financial industry. Um, along with several other things, but in this particular case where we've had, had such a, a big difference between the previous administration and the present administration, uh, it had even a larger effect than, than, than in the past. Uh, fiscal policy, uh, tax policy, uh, income policy, all those things that are you know pretty much government type organizations, uh, folks were elected on the premise they were going to change all that. And so the, the change was to, to for, supposedly for the better, but obviously it, it has a huge effect on the financial industry and people like myself who deal with the financial industry. Well, I, I think, you know, President Obama's fiscal policies are starting to, you know, take effect or we're feeling the effect of it more and more. Um, you know, the big thing that concerns me is the uh, fragile economic recovery which can be uh, made worse by high gas prices. And high gas prices don't just hurt people at the pump, they really affect shipping costs and that really jacks up the cost of so many other products and services that they're delivering. So I'm very concerned about the uh, rising fuel prices. I'm afraid it's gonna be $5 by uh, Memorial Day. And I think that's just gonna have a really negative effect on the economy and possibly put us into a double dip recession, which we looked like we were climbing out of and, and we're not going to uh, fall victim to, but now it looks like it could be a possibility. Congressional changes have swayed side to side in recent years so rapidly that could it be doing more harm than good? Yeah, when you have rapid or changes so drastic from one, one party to the other, uh, especially over a fairly short period of time, uh, it, it has uh, effects on, on primarily investors. Uh, investors, people who invest their money with me, um, tend to be somewhat nervous and, and when things are going well and uh, you know the, the economy's good and everybody's working uh, it's much easier for people to put money away or, or to invest money when there's so much uncertainty and so many unanswered questions it makes people very very tentative to invest money they're not they're not sure what it whether it's going to be there later on even their needs uh, if they, we've counted on social security or something to be a part of their retirement situation uh, there's questions about whether that will even be around and can we really count on that uh, some of the laws that make it uh, advisable and invest as far as tax deferrals and things like that um, when they are up in question due to changes in Congress and, and parties uh, that, that favor one set of laws versus another set of laws uh, it obviously has a huge effect on people from a from a small business perspective I, I can imagine that the changes that have occurred now uh, with with the election of, of um, so many Republicans the last election it seems like um, it, you can feel that things are moving in a different direction I couldn't tell you if I think it's a good thing or a bad thing uh, you know when you're running a small business you're kind of knee-deep in that and I and I try to pay attention a little bit to, to the politics of it so, so I can run my business for another 10 years. Um, at first I was a little nervous uh, with a lot of the conversations about um, local government or otherwise uh, being so Tea Party and things like that and people, were, people wanted a lot of change. And my business was still doing good so I didn't want a lot of change. Um, but I understand why they are doing what they're doing. I understand 
you know, coming out of a recession. I understand that we're still, um, we still have a huge debt to pay. I, there's a lot that um, I'm glad I'm not a congressman. I wouldn't want to deal with it. But um, there, you know, there's a lot that that goes along with it. Uh, we have a 14 trillion dollar deficit today, and it was 2006. It was eight trillion. That's a huge. I mean, I don't know how can it keep going that way. I don't know if it has anything to do with Obama being elected or, or Bush tax cuts. These things are, are, are confusing from a small business person's perspective. I think I can't even fathom or focus on on what they have to do to. Um, but when it boils down to to what we do around here, yeah, I want um, customers to be happy. I want them to be successful. I don't want kids to have no hope for going to college. I don't want. And these are things that people who are in office have to take care of right now. And ironically. Um you know, certain parties will reflect, say some of these laws are in, in reflection of uh, a certain income level. Um, but when you flip back and forth, we have two parties, and one supposedly represents the more wealthier, and one supposedly represents the less wealthier. But it's interesting that many of these changes that come about, either by compromise or design, uh, really affect everybody at every level, not just one particular financial segment of people. In some regards, it's good to have split government, and the Republicans have gained control of the House. The Democrats maintain control of the Senate. You know, I think that can be a good thing if you're willing to compromise, but the problem is, is that not many people or sides are willing to truly compromise, and that's where I think we have some of the political instability that we see, is the, the refusal to compromise at all costs. In early 2011, Wisconsin's Governor Scott Walker introduced a budget repair bill to fix the state's deficit. The bill's most controversial element, stripping public sector union members of their collective bargaining rights. This resulted in protests in Madison that gained national attention. On the one side, I tattoo um, a number of teachers, and I was um, completely bummed out at, at, at how this went. And all you kind of kept hearing as it was going on was, um, hey, you guys elected them, kind of a thing. That Even that's what reporters were saying or, or news people. And I don't think that was the case. I don't think it was... Um, perceived that way. The whole action that happened, you know, Wisconsin being the focus for the whole nation for a little while there, was pretty ridiculous and outrageous. It was, um, if our government can play those kind of games, then why can't a small business get away with doing things like that? You know, I mean, or any business. Why, why, how is this even legally possible? Um, I, think he, I think he drove it down people's throats, and I, whether it was the right or wrong thing to do, I don't like the way it was done, and I think a lot of people find that way. It, I, I do a significant amount of business with the, the um, teachers and the and administrators type thing, and those folks really are <laughs> really not sure what they have anymore other than they know they have less money. Um, and, and so that, I think, has, has had some effect on our business here. Uh, there's less money available for those folks to put into their retirement plans um, to make some of the, you know, to, to fund their discretionary income, which they, they're, they're a middle class population that spends quite a bit of discretionary income on things like brewer games and things like Harley Davidson motorcycles and things like that. So I, I would say that um, uh, not as big of an effect governmental wise as, as probably the national scene, but in my case in this business it, it has uh, um, has had some effect. You know, as a teacher, that's clearly been, uh, you know, one of greater effect. Now, I do, I'm one of the few teachers that will say it's Governor Doyle that put us into this mess of borrowing and spending money and raiding funds that should not have been raided and uh, racking up the debt that we have. Uh, you know, he's to be equally excoriated, I think, for, you know, Walker's trying to be the solution. He's trying to be the uh, the antidote to the re reckless fiscal policies of the last few years. The problem is, is that you know I think Governor Walker uh, has tried to do it all at one time, and uh, you know it's sort of th uh, uh, throwing the baby out with the bathwater in terms of uh, it all happening at once, and it's making it hard for people to adjust and to uh, acclimate when he's looking for such sweeping changes all at once. It seems everyone is taking sides, left or right. Although political awareness may be a good thing, it seems to tear apart the unified nation we all grew up knowing. It's unfortunate. It really divided people, even though it wasn't supposed to. You can't go into a grocery store and say you're a Republican or a Democrat anymore, because if you're a Democrat, the Republican's pissed. If you're a Republican, then the Democrat, the guy standing next to you. And even being on camera right now, I have to be very careful. This place does, we have two businesses, and um, a lot of people come into these tattoo shops, the ones that we have here. 
But if I tell people that I'm a Democrat, all of a sudden Republicans aren't. I mean, that's the way yeah. it feels right now. And if I tell someone that I'm uh, that I'm a conservative, then I, I can't lose liberal business because I'm an artist. I mean, most of my friends and customers are liberal, so it's very scary right now. I don't agree with what he did, and I tattoo teachers, and I have teachers that are friends, and that's not just it. But um, um, there are state workers who are going to be uh, uh, retired longer than they were employed by the state, yet they will receive their their benefits and their paycheck uh, for if you were employed from the age of 20 to the age of 60, which you could retire before that if you're a state worker, um, and you live to 80. That's 40 years for each of those people that you're still paying for someone who's not necessarily working. So I understand that something has to be done. There needs to be a better system. But I, I also, on the other hand, uh, believe that if you're going to put your time and effort into working for the state or local government, I think that's that's admirable and you should be treated with respect and you shouldn't have your rights taken away. So. With rapid changes in government officials, one can only conclude that this would be the reason for not getting anything done at almost every level of government. Personally, I trace it back to the era of Bill Clinton. I think that the well was poisoned uh, in the 90s in terms of lack of cooperation. Now, um, both sides, as we say, both sides do it, uh, but whether that's uh, a recent change or it's always been there, I don't know, but it does seem that uh, basically people on both sides have the attitude of you're perfectly entitled to my opinion and it's either my way or it's my way um, and that has led to a lack of cooperation, a lack of compromise um, and a lack of political solutions and a lot of uh, you know, bitter partisanship on both sides. I think it is probably one of the most uh, changing environments we've ever seen as far as the time. The environments change over time, probably I mean, back to the 80s where we had inflation and the double-digit teens and, and interest rates there as well. Um, people have kind of forgot about those. So there are significant changes, but the flip-flopping as quickly as it's happened um, is really made for a lot of uneasiness with, with investors or in the financial we try to plan for the long term 10 to 20 years minimum and when things change when you invest money today under one set of rules and guidelines and then two years later there's a giant sweep and maybe those rules aren't even in effect anymore it makes it a little hard for people to have confidence in in what it is they're trying to accomplish um, on top of that you know we take a long term perspective perspective on things and regardless of which party is in the in the Oval Office or even in the state um, people need to look for the long term. I, I would say uh, eight years of, um, of, a, of a fairly Republican, at least the president, you know, um, eight years politically our, our government has been very conservative and, and ten years of war that nobody here understands unless you're actually a soldier or someone who as a family otherwise um, and I think now that Ob Obama being president I, th I think I'm sure that affected these people I'm sure that was a, a, a cut to them and I'm sure they want their power back and, and politics today I'm sure is no different than politics in 1770 and it's about power. Uh, it's definitely probably one of the more volatile times that I've seen because we're not just getting at it from one thing. We, we, yes, we have a government changeover, but as a fact, we had a, a major, major recession. We had um, a bank's default, which is pretty much an unheard of thing up until recently, uh, other than back in the 80s. So th we've had financially some of the, the craziest things happen, like almost a perfect storm, and government and, and rapid changing government is, has been a huge part of it. We have people getting elected due to a certain group of people who have a common common goal or a common thing. Uh, we want less taxation or we want less government. And so they vote for someone who promises less government. Or on the other hand, um, someone who you know wants to, to have a, a particular uh, in agenda promoted. Uh, we want to provide more welfare type programs or pro pro provide more things for the under underprivileged. And if there's enough folks that, that endorse that policy, they enact another change. And it makes it really difficult because they're usually at the opposite ends. And the problem is that we have party, in my opinion, we have, when parties are elected either either way, the and they do get majorities, such as they've had in the last couple times around, 
there doesn't seem to be a lot of compromise going on. And unfortunately, all of these problems, both sides of the, the scale, in my opinion, have some merit. And the middle ground is somewhere in the middle. But because of such a rapid turnover and the power, the overall power that goes with it, um, there doesn't seem to be a lot of that going on. And I think it, you know, while it may benefit one group, then it damages the other group. And then they get together and they outvote out the other group. And then now it's re damaging. So it's not, doesn't seem to, even though they claim they're, you know, trying to reach across party lines and things like that, I don't think I really see that. If instability in public direction gets nothing accomplished, how can America move towards a more prosperous direction? The world is a very dangerous and unpredictable place. And, uh, you know, we've been dealing with crises uh, in the Middle East. Um, it remains to be seen if these movements in some of the Middle Eastern countries are democracy movements or movements towards radicalism. Uh, but you have that. North Korea has behaved itself recently. China hasn't been as much of a problem. Um, that all the bitter partisan uh, internal or domestic pol political squabbles may seem like nothing if we have world events that go out of control. Uh, but I do think what has to happen, if not compromise, um, I think you have to have one side win or the other. It has to be a clean Democrat sweep or a clean Republican sweep, and people have to be able to rule and to get legislation passed um, so that they're, at least temporarily, that there may be one victor and one loser. But I do think while split government can be helpful if you're willing to compromise, if not, then I think you have to have a clear winner and uh, you know, hope that one side or the other can start to implement some policies rather than ha be uh, uh, paralyzed by inaction. I'm not hard an optimist. I'm optimistic about the, the, the democratic system and how it works in American people. Um, I, I think after a while people finally get to the opinion that this isn't working. It, it, we didn't get our way. We can't always have all, all our own way. And I think after a period of time, people will either elect people that are, are more in the middle, so to speak. Uh, possibly a third party will emerge. Uh, who knows? Um, but uh, from that standpoint, I, I think there's going to be, a, we've had other times in history where we've had severe uh, differences in, in party opinions and, and severe groupings of people. And we've resolved those over time. Uh, finally, just the point where people actually realize none of this is doing anybody any real particular good. And, but I, I'm, I guess I'm still optimistic enough to think at some point in time people, the general populace, as long as we have a democratic system, let's say enough is enough. Let's get some people that, that are willing to listen to each other and just solve the problem as best we can. Which, uh, so everybody gets something and yet everybody has to give something up. I think that's what it'll definitely be. I mean, that's all they ever do is compromise. I don't think there's ever going to be a fantastic system. They haven't fixed Social Security for 20 years. They haven't fixed, I, I, and it's hard. Imagine the amount of money. that they, they, They're saying numbers that you and I can't possibly fathom. I don't think they can in the IRS office, let alone, or, or you know, or Wall Street. I don't, how they're thinking about these things, and it all boils down to money. You can't just print more. They're going to have to figure something out, I guess. But, um, I, 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 like I said, I, I they're just, going to have to try to get control um, first, and, and that's going to take compromise. And then after compromise, when everybody's feeling a little better about things, like they ever will, um, is then maybe you can put forth some excellent system. I mean, we have to figure some stuff out. We really do, so that people do live um, happily ever after. That's all I think anybody wants. A couple people want guns, a couple people want this, a couple people want that, and everybody just wants to be happy. The recent budget um compromise of cutting uh, 38 billion dollars was ridiculous. I mean it was a drop in the bucket and you know the Democrats, Democrats look at it one way they want to raise taxes, Republicans look at it another way they want to cut spending. Either solution can be painful. Either solution you know people don't necessarily like or don't want to experience. They want all the pleasure of spending money without all the uh, you know negative side effects of not having that money available or not spending on those programs. Um, but if not willing to compromise, then I think one side has to be a victor and one side has to be a loser, that there has to be uh, you know, a clear Republican majority or a clear Democrat majority to be able to get things done. I think a lot of people are really uh, pretty happy with their lives, no matter what, you know, a tea party or whatever you're doing kind of a thing, and then you go home and you're pretty satisfied, you know, really, if you're working. Um, 
I think that's the most important thing. No man or woman who wants to work should be out of work right now, and that's one of the things they have to tackle. And um, if that's compromise or whatever that takes, that would be a place where you're going to have to be intuitive. You're going to have to look in a way. How do you make money now that um, now that these type of uh, blue-collar jobs are gone, now that the, ho the housing market is not going to reappear tomorrow? It's just not going to. So how do carpenters, my father's a carpenter, how do electricians, how do these people get back to work? That, that's what needs to be focused on. And then, of course, that's billions of dollars in tax revenue right there, just getting them back to work. But you can't make people buy houses. I mean, really, there's always a way to find something good and something pathetic like that. Unless it was to lead to something civil, and then we're going to have huge problems, and I, it better not, because I've got a five-year-old daughter, and she should not have to go through that. So I'm expecting these idiots, actually, to figure this stuff out, because, you know, they were voted in. The majority of politicians looking to be elected promise change, but the country hasn't seen a positive change that people can live with. Where's our nation's change that we were promised? That's, that's the problem. Uh, when people are, are unhappy or uh, feel a certain need, you know, obviously it's easy to, to vote for something different. Even if you're not sure what something different is, you know you don't like the status quo, so you want to vote for something that is um, going to be different. Now, different may not be better, but if you're, I'm a politician and I, I you know, get elected on the idea that we're going to change something, um, the, especially some of these folks have gotten elected, they're going to change, but they never showed a plan to how they, what they planned on changing. So people tend to jump on that bandwagon because they're unhappy in their present situation. I, I think, um, you know, if you look back at what changes were made, in some cases very little. Um, I think oftentimes uh, people look at the change and they go, Whatever, whatever they, the changes were going to be, and, and you know, the, the changes they can see sometimes aren't, aren't for the better, they might even be for the worse. I, I think the real change would be a Congress and a president that would be serious, and as well as a governor and a state legislature, uh, that would be serious about true budget reform, true budget cuts. Um, I think you can do it with cutting taxes, because what are people going to do? If you cut their taxes, what are they going to do with that extra money? They're going to spend it. They're going to plow it back into the economies. We say the Obama. We say Republican. We say, um, and, and I'm typically not a person to point a finger. You know, maybe we should do something about it and not ask what his problem is. I can't imagine um, someone saying, well, this is one person's fault. It's not. You know, the change. I don't care what he promised. Do something while you're in there. Or I don't care even what Governor Walker promised. Do something while you're in there. I mean, you don't have to do what you did, you know, cause thousands and thousands of people to be, you know, to go crazy for a little while there. But um, I think it did. I know. They want to change. And I think what happened this year uh, in Madison, I mean, that was, that's change. That's different. And he promised it. And it happened. Um, so I think these, some of these people are going to carry through uh, on, on what their changes are. Wherever a change may be, or whoever it may lie with, one thing remains certain. This country deserves a change that we can all believe in. Change hurts, and Americans don't like to hurt. Um, they've gone through enough. I'm sure they don't want to go through any more, especially if, if you don't have a job and then they say, okay, now you don't have a job, I'm going to take more from you. That really sucks. But on, on your end, on, on your end of being that person, whether you're out of work or, you're or you have two jobs or you're trying to make ends meet or whatever, you have got to look at something for your future. It's also your responsibility. Being a human being, being born on this earth, has nothing to do with our government. It's not our government's problem to take care of you forever. It is also your problem to go do some stuff for yourself. I firmly believe that no matter, that's, that's in between party lines, is human, right? And so as a human, you've got to look at what can I do to make my life better. So sometimes happiness isn't necessarily, I don't think, our government's problem. But I think change is on the way.